Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video I'm going to show you how to migrate virtual machines from VMware to Proxmox and finally be able to tell VMware, go F yourselves. But it's not as easy as it sounds, we are going to use the native tool provided by Proxmox and generally it does work, but it's not flawless, not even close and it's full of caveats. So to make a long story short, watch this video. All right, everyone, so we are at the computer and as you can see, I already have my, my destination Proxmox up and running and I also have my ESXi server with a couple of virtual machines we might be working with, but the way I'm going to do this video is I'm going to show the migration process in its most simplistic of ways and every time I, need, I feel like we've reached a caveat I'm going to stop and talk about it right then and there. So even before getting started we have reached our first caveat as you can see this is an ESXi server and if you have one, two, three you might be okay but if you have more you might be managing your ESXi servers with a vCenter server and the uh, Proxmox migration tool you will see it you will see me configuring configuring it in a few minutes it cannot be directed towards a vCenter server it can only be directed towards an ESXi server so if you have a lot of virtual machines a lot of hosts you might want to start vMotioning as many virtual machines to as little host as possible but otherwise Proxmox doesn't have any other ways of uh, uh, providing you with a, a, an easier solution. So let's get started and here's for example a Linux virtual machine. By the way there are a few caveats that are more specific to, to uh, Windows, some towards uh, uh, Linux. But here's my Linux virtual machine. As you can see it's a regular Ubuntu virtual machine, nothing special about it. It's almost vanilla. And as you can see, it's powered on currently, so we've reached our second caveat. For the migration process to, to succeed, virtual machines cannot be powered on, they have to be powered off. So a, a downtime is bound to happen and you need to take uh, that into account. So I am going to power off my virtual machine. By the way, a third caveat which is much more critical in Windows virtual machines, I've already uninstalled VMware tools from this virtual machine. In Linux it's just one command, by the way I will have this command in the description of this video. If you don't see the command in the description of this video, write me a comment. I might have forgotten, so remind me with a comment. In Windows it's much easier, all you have to do is go into Control Panel, go into Programs and Features, this is a Proxmox virtual machine, so we, you see the uh, Proxmox uh, guest tools, but in VMware you will see VMware tools, so just uninstall them. So I have already uninstalled my virtual my uh, VMware tools, so I, all I have to do, now, to do now is to power off the virtual machine. So it, it will take a minute, but we have reached actually other caveats. If this virtual machine has snapshots on it, you will do yourself a huge favor if you'll delete them, otherwise the migration process will take forever. And another caveat, yet again, if this virtual machine has a DVD image mounted on its virtual drive like I do, make sure you unmount it. I've seen migrations fail because of a DVD image is mounted on the virtual DVD drive. All right, there are other caveats, but they are more geared towards Windows virtual machines. So I am going to, uh, after all this talking, start the process. Let's switch to our Proxmox host. We'll go into the data center level in storage, click on add, and you'll see here ESXi. So let's call it ESXi and provide the IP address of our ESXi host. Of course, credentials are needed. And I'm also going to skip certificate verification and click on add. 
at this point you will see the ESXi server has, has been added almost like a storage entity in Proxmox, but we can see that it found our two virtual machines, which is great. So in order to start the actual migration process, it's not a migration, it's an importing process, to be, to be honest. Select the relevant virtual machine and click on import. At this point, this wizard is almost, it looks exactly the same as a new virtual machine creation wizard in Proxmox. You can select the amount of sockets, the amount of cores, the amount of memory, the type of virtual machine, the name, the type of CPU. These are all options that we are all familiar in the VMware, in the, in the VM creation wizard in Proxmox. Moving, I, I'm, by the way, I'm not changing anything here. Moving on to the advanced tab. Unless you have a very good reason to change something, something here, for example, the type of SCSI controller or the type of network card model. By the way, this, it can stay VMware VMX Net 3. Proxmox supports it. So let's click on import and the import process will begin. Now, depending on the amount of data on the, vir on the virtual machine, the size of the hard drive, the, the speed of your network, this can take a long time. I am going to pause the recording right here and resume it once this is over. All right, so the migration process is completed and actually behind the scenes it's just copying v VMDK and VMX files over to Proxmox and then migrating them to Proxmox QCOW2 files, but regardless the process is over, so we can close out of here. Here's our virtual machine and we can actually go ahead and power it on and even take a look at the console to make sure that it does power on okay all right so we got the ubuntu boot up process so i'm guessing the virtual machine will probably load just fine and it just did that's great we can see that we have a functional virtual machine in proxmox that was migrated from vmware that's great by the way the keen eyed of you guys may have seen me when I started the uh, import wizard, you might have seen this option, live import. L let me just cool off. This doesn't mean a live migration, meaning uh, the, the virtual machine can stay powered on throughout the process. That's not the case. All this option does is, uh, is that once enough data has been copied over to Proxmox so that the uh, operating system can load and boot up. This is exactly what Proxmox will do. It will power on the virtual machine and load the operating system while the rest of the data will start to, will continue, sorry, to be copied over in the background. This is not a live migration, but it's the next best thing and it can minimize downtime, which is great. For me, it wasn't really relevant, but this option is there. All right, so, Going back to our virtual machine, we can see that it's functional. If we go to the summary, we can see that we don't have the guest tools installed. But again, with a single command, you can install the Proxmox guest tools. So in general, the process is complete. It's, it's successful with the caveats taken into account, but, but overall it succeeded. Now, let me go back to our Windows Virtual Machine. We do have a Windows Virtual Machine that we didn't migrate over yet. There are a few caveats here. For example, if you have your hard drive encrypted, for example, with BitLocker, from what I understand, I haven't tried it yet, you might not be able to migrate this Virtual Machine because Proxmox will not be able to read the content of the hard drive. That's one caveat. Also, if you activated the virtual machine and migrated to Proxmox, then in reality the virtual hardware has been changed, so you might need to activate the virtual machine again once it's on Proxmox. That's the caveats that are more, let's say, geared towards Windows. So guys, this was the process of migrating from VMware virtual workloads towards Proxmox. I hope you like this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. 
and I see you all in my next video.